Hey everybody. Um, I hope you're all well. I haven't posted for a while. Um, as I posted recently on Instagram, I had some time off. And to be honest, I wasn't planning this post either. However, um, one of our lovely uh, vet nurses reached out on a social media page um, asking for some help um, from our vet nursing community um, on fluid therapy. And I'm not surprised, you know, these things are tough. Um, I think we're a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of calculations out there. There are a few and a lot of people in the comments were reassuring saying this. They were saying, look, I know there's a lot of calculations. It's just about what the clinic uses. And that's really true. And um, not one calculation is the best or the most or, 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 or the, the most accurate one. They are all a rough um they are all rough they pretty much all kind of get the same values it really just depends on the calculations and the protocol the clinic uses but it's really good to be aware of these calculations um, and, and be able to reference them so that they're not so unfamiliar if you go to a clinic and you say hey what is how do you work out your fluids and they say oh we do it this way it's like oh okay i do know i know of that way it's not one i use but i know of it and then it's not too scary to be able to approach it that way so first of all, let's just dive straight in and look at look at maintenance rates and what I mean by a few of them, literally these are just like some of the ways you can work out maintenance rates. Now when we say maintenance rates, we basically mean the daily amount of fluid a body needs or a patient's need, their cells need that fluid. Just like we need eight cups of water a day. I mean, the struggle is real there. I don't know about anyone else, but I do struggle with my eight glasses of water. Um, but same thing. So it's nothing to do with dehydration. It's nothing to do with any fluid that's been lost. It is just what the body needs every day. Um, and we call that maintenance. Um, and we're going to be looking, you can see here, I've got at least four examples of how the same maintenance rates can be calculated. Um, and as I said, they're not wrong, neither's wrong, neither's right, they're just all out there. Um, and it's important to know that we'll be working with body weights, so what our patients actually weigh. And when we're talking about that, we really are trying to reference their ideal body weight. So if you do have a patient that is overweight or obese, um, we want to try not to go off that weight, just more their ideal body weight. Um, because if we account for their actual body weight and they're carrying too much weight, um, we do risk fluid overloading them. So let's just dive in and look at the first one here. I'll switch colors. We've got this guy. And this is the one I use the most. And actually, two is very similar. So you'll, you may recognize these both one and two as the um, RER calculations. If you've worked out nutritional plans for patients, it's basically just the RER calculations and they can be used with fluid therapy, which is pretty cool too. And the first one here is the one I'm, I'm, I'm mostly familiar with. It's the one I tend to use. It's body weight to the power of 0.75. That sounds scary. Once you know how to work that out on a calculator, there's literally a one button. And once you know that button, it's fine, so it don't let that put you off too much, but it's body weight to the power of 0.75 times 70. Now, it's to the power of 0.75 because pretty much 75% 70 of a body is water. So that's kind of what that is referencing there. Um, this one is very similar. It's slightly, this is, this number one is a, what we call an exponential equation. Um, number two here is a slightly simpler version of that. It's slightly less sort of scientific, but it's body weight times 30 and then you would equals that and then plus 70. So I tend to not use that one, I tend to use number one. You would also not be wrong if you broadly um, referenced uh, 40 to 60 mils per kilogram um, per day. Uh, generally the larger the animal, the less requirement they have, so this would be a large breed dog. The smaller the dog or the or cats would maybe would usually go the higher end, so 60. Um, but you wouldn't be wrong, it's a bit more of a guess than number one. Um, but it's a it's a, it's a rough margin. So I know when I my first clinic we went 50 for a lot of things. We went kind of right in the middle here, 50 mils per kilogram. Um, then we have the AHA guidelines, um, which lots of people quoted in the actual post, actually, which was really good to see. 
Um, AHA is the American Association, uh, sorry, the um, American Animal Hospital Association. That's what this is. And together, along with the American Association of Feline Practitioners, they released some guidelines back in 2013. And those guidelines for fluids recommended for cats, we should be doing 80 times body weight to the power of 0.75. So there's our 0.75 again, and we know why now. And for dogs, they recommended 132 times body weight to the power of 0.75. Okay, they can get these, these can get higher um, amounts of fluid um, compared to the one I use being number one. Um, and the AHA rule of thumb really is is kind of here. Um, they say cats, it's a roughly two to three uh, mils per kilogram per hour. And for dogs, it's two to six. Most of my calculations, when I work them out with the body weight to the power of 0.75 times 70, so our number one there, um, they tend to be at the lower ranges here rather than higher, um, which is pretty interesting. And it's really important to remember that with any fluid rates, it's not about perfect calculation because patients have different tolerances to fluid. Some tolerate fluids very well. Some, if they've got underlying uh, kidney disease or heart disease, they may not have as much tolerance for fluids and we don't want to push them overboard. We don't want to make their organs work harder. So it's not about this is their rate, this is their definite set and forget. That's, that's not what nursing is about. We get a fluid rate and we monitor patients on fluid therapy. And monitoring monitoring fluid therapy and detecting fluid overload is an entirely different topic in itself. Uh, really interesting, the early signs, the late signs, and the early signs are very subtle. I will definitely do that in another video. Um, if people definitely want that, do comment below. Um, but yeah, so you can see here, so you know, this one particular nurse was asking, you know, maintenance rates, I'm so confused. There seems to be a lot of them. And there are, as you can see, I've got one to four here. This is just different ways you can calculate it. What you've got to do is ask your vet always, okay? Find out what it is. They've asked you to put this patient on fluids. Find out what their general guideline is. Um, a lot of clinics use the two and a half times body weight. And you can see why from the um, AHA's rule of thumb here, where, where that is coming from. Um, and that's per hour. So you can kind of see that. Um, next we have, uh, next I'll just touch on dehydration deficits. It's a different calculation. Um, so this, you're getting a patient that's, that's dehydrated. The vet's saying, okay, we've got a dehydrated patient here. We need to replace this fluid. They need that replacement fluid on top of their maintenance fluids for that ongoing day. They've already, they've come in with fluid loss. We need to replace that loss, but we also need to then, you know, they still need their eight cups of water during that time. So they need both. Um, a rehydration plan and they need their maintenance fluids on top okay so a rehydration plan would look a bit like this i've got a i've got an example here we've got a 20 kilogram dog and the vet thinks this dog is uh, or, or, or estimates this dog to be six percent dehydrated and the calculation for that is body weight times the percentage of dehydration times 10 so we said 20 times 6% dehydration times 10. So we're going to estimate this 20 kilogram dog has a fluid deficit or i.e. has lost 1.2 litres of fluid, 1,200 mils. Oh, that advert was too funny. Okay, so this means 20 kilograms times 6% dehydration times 10 made uh, 1,200 mils loss. That needs to be replaced. Now, generally we replace fluids over a 24 hour period, okay? So we'll say divide by 24. Sometimes, especially in emergency, vets may choose to replace that fluid over 12 hours instead of 24, but um, for ease here, let's just say 24. So that's uh, 50 mils an hour. That would what is what we would need on our machine. But as I said, we also need our maintenance. Okay. So these are our maintenance. This was our, we're going to call that deficit. So let's just go with my, uh, the example I use, which is number one, which was body weight to the power of 0.75. So that is 20 to the power of 0.75 times 70 equals. Okay. So you saw that up there. 
And the way we do that is I want my calculator up without the ads. Thank you very much. I'll flip them around. So start again. We do 20. Now the power of is this X, Y button here. Okay. Um, we want him to the power of 0 0.75 times 70. And we've got 662 mils. So that's what this 20 kilo dog needs a day. That's its eight glasses of water. 600 and it was 62 mils. Again, we divide that by 24 because it's maintenance is always over a 24 hour period. And we get a fluid rate of 27.6 mils an hour. I'm pretty sure. Let's go back. Divide that by 24 hours in the day. 27.6. So we need both of these going at one time. So the next thing to do is add 50 to 27.6. We'll go again. So to, uh, we said 27.6 plus 50. So the dog's fluid rate to replace um, its 6% uh, dehydration but continue with its fluid maintenance based on the calculation, I would have used 77.6. 77.6 mils per hour of course you would check that with a vet you would monitor um and then if the vet used a different calculation that would also be fine and um, really it's not about the fluid rate at the end of the day it's about the monitoring always and i think we forget that sometimes um in clinic because yeah things are busy um if this patient had ongoing losses if this patient was vomiting if this patient was having diarrhea then we also need to account for those ongoing losses. And we constantly need to be adding that because obviously if we're replacing its dehydration and it's just having more losses, then we're always going to be on the back foot in replacing all of its fluids, aren't we? So ongoing losses, the way I was, well, ideally what you'd do is measure the loss. You'd physically measure it and say, right, this patient has lost 20 mils in this vomit. We need to put that 20 mils back onto its rehydration plan over a 24 hour period. And that, so that you know that makes sense and um, if you can't measure it let's just say it goes into the bedding and it gets soaked up or it's outside i was taught four mils per kilogram per episode of whatever it is that might that might be the vomit or it might be the diarrhea so yes ideally you measure them ideally replace it but otherwise yeah yeah i was taught to estimate it that way and you would as i said add it on to that daily amount um, in mils per kilo, but you wouldn't have to worry about that if the patient wasn't having ongoing losses. So although I hope that helps to see there are different ways of, of working out maintenance rates. Um, as I said, not one of them is the perfect one um, and they are all a little bit different. Um, but thank you for that. Um, hopefully I'll follow up with a video on um, fluid therapy monitoring. Um, I think I find fluid therapy pretty interesting and hope you did too. Thank you.